I was in the northwest section of Algonquin Park, located in Ontario, Canada, traveling by canoe on a seven-day solo canoe trip that began a few days ago at access point number one at Mog Lake. From the access point, I paddled across Mog to the Amable Defond River. From there, I had followed the river to North Tea Lake, where I camped the first night. On the second day of my trip, I continued to slow travel deeper into the park to Mangotassi Lake and had a couple encounters with great blue herons and a good view of the last supermoon of the year. On the third day, I continued my trip and made my way from Mangotassi to Bigger Lake. On the way, I had a close encounter with a moose and her calf before passing through Hornbeam Lake and portaging around the scenic Twin Falls. I had reached the halfway point of the trip and there was still so much to come. This is day four of my solo trip in Algonquin Park. Well, good morning. So, it did rain last night. Not a lot, but uh, a little bit. Luckily, it stopped. I was a little bit worried that, you know, I'd be doing these portages today, carrying the weight of wet gear, but, but yeah, everything's dry, so that's good. So, I'm uh, just having my coffee, and I'm gonna have some oatmeal, pack up and get out on the water. Just a short ways to go. Um, that way. And over there's a portage and I believe it's a 520 meters. So yeah, definitely need the caffeine, but uh, get that into me and, and head out. Today's journey would be a distance of approximately 10 kilometers, with 3 kilometers of that distance being portaging overland between lakes. Of course, I was doing the portage sections in two carries, so would actually be hiking a distance of around 9 kilometers, so a total distance of around 16 kilometers. From Bigger Lake, I'd be passing through Sinclair Lake, Kawa Lake, Upper Kawa Lake, and then eventually Three Mile Lake, where I plan to stay the night. The conditions were close to perfect to start, with relatively calm water and the wind on my back as I crossed Bigger Lake. As I approached the first portage, the shore was shallow and sandy, which is great for access to shore, but a bit tricky if you want to try and keep your shoes dry. 
Okay, well, first portage of the day. Vigor Lake to Sinclair Lake, 520 meters. The portage was relatively easy going, but access to Sinclair Lake was buggy with plenty of mosquitoes and deer flies to annoy me. I often put a couple branches down on the mud at shores like this as a makeshift bridge to help prevent me from sinking too deep as I reload the canoe. I don't mind getting my feet wet, but I've learned from experience that a day of wet feet can cause all kinds of problems later on. The three lakes I'd be traveling through, Sinclair, Kawa, and Upper Kawa, were all small lakes and quick to travel across. I personally don't care for these small lakes because it always feels like more work to load and unload the canoe with my gear for each portage, but their saving grace is a bit of relief from the biting insects, and sometimes, when I'm lucky, a sighting of some animal getting a drink or having a snack on the aquatic vegetation. Okay, short little paddle. Next portage. Sinclair to Kawa. 1,040 meters, one kilometer. Here we go. Nice. Very nice. Whew. I am being swarmed with mosquitoes. But I'm there. Kawa Lake. There's a bull moose out there. Got to get across the other side to the portage and then another, I think it's 320 meters to Upper Kawa Lake. Yeah, Upper Kawa Lake.
Kala to Upper Kala. 320 meters. There's some campsites over on Upper Kawa, so I think I'm gonna pull in on one of them and take a break there. Then I have another portage. I think it's a 1200 meters. So do this one, find a campsite, have a rest, have lunch, and uh, yeah, then be ready to go for one last push. Okay, so this is not the end of the portage, but it's flooded out. Very, 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 very buggy over here. Um, I tried to walk a little bit on the side, but as you can see, it's just dense bush. And then in front of me here, I don't know if it's gonna be enough to float the boat, but I'm gonna try. If I have to get out and pull the boat, then that's what I'll do. But I'd rather walk through the water once than twice or three times. So that's what I'll do. Well, she's floating. And now she's not. So much for trying to keep my feet dry, but there is no option at this point but to get in and either carry or try to float everything over to where I could get back in the canoe and try to paddle again. The deer flies and mosquitoes were relentless through here, so if you can imagine the combination of high humidity and swarms of flies trying to feast on me, this was definitely not a fun part of the portage. In fact, in the short little stretch, I felt what felt like a dragonfly with big wings fluttering on the back of my neck. Later I discovered a couple large bites and decent sized bloodstains on the inside of my shirt collar. I still don't know what type of fly it was, but it must have been a decent size. Yep, scrape scrape on the bottom of the ugly canoe. Well, I'm on Upper Kawa and out on the water, there's a slight breeze, no mosquitoes. So I'm just gonna drift for a bit. Have my snack here. Okay, Upper Kawa Lake to Three Mile Lake, 
1220 meters. Three Mile Lake. And the rain started. Three Mile Lake was like the rest of the park had been, quiet with nobody around and all the campsites vacant. Aside from the intermittent rain, it was a nice paddle on the scenic lake. As I made my way from the south end towards the north of the lake, I came across this site of a reminder of how dangerous Mother Nature can be while out in the back country. This large area was obviously hit by strong winds, if not a tornado, at some point in the past, blowing over all the trees. Years ago, I was out camping during similar conditions and can honestly say it was one of the most frightening experience I've ever had. My son and I were lucky that night up in Wabakimi when a tree came down on our tent, narrowly missing us. The tent was destroyed, but we were lucky to survive. It's one of the many risks we take as backcountry canoe campers. It won't deter me from getting out and enjoying the landscape, but sites like these are definitely a reminder that it's important to be prepared and always lean on the side of safety. Okay, well, I passed a few campsites. I just stopped in at this one. This is the one that I, you know, looking at the map, I thought I would stay here, but it's not the nicest site. So there are two more. One looks like it's right at the end of the portage and then one just north of it. So I'm gonna go down there, check it out. And hopefully one of those is better. I don't mind camping at the end of a portage if it's a nice site. Um, there's nobody else here, so it's not like it would be busy. So I would like to get somewhere soon, get the water filter going, get something to drink. All right, so this is the portage from Three Mile to Manitou, and it's marked at 2,800. My map has it at 2,900. Regardless, we're talking three kilometers, so, well, just shy. Um, there is a campsite in there. Where is it? Can I see it? There. So let's go have a look. It's not really that bad. Um, you know, for one night, it's, you know, like a three kilometer portage tomorrow. So to have everything right here that I can just get up and go, normally I wouldn't, but I think I'm gonna camp here. And uh, it'll save me that half hour of paddling over here in the morning. Um, 
yeah, I'll make it work. Okay, well, rain's not really letting up. It tapers down a little, but then it starts up heavy again. So I think the campfire is probably just pointless. So I made a few adjustments to the tarp. I'll step out and show you what's going on. Just give me a bit more room. Basically, I just uh, I changed one of the guy lines and uh, just added a couple sticks in the middle to just spread it out a little bit and uh yeah so that's it it's after six o'clock now and i'm gonna get dinner going today's just gonna be a an mre well not an mre a freeze-dried meal it's a lasagna so yeah the last one wasn't too bad so We'll give this a shot and, uh, you know, what's bad about lasagna? I'd been wearing wet hiking shoes for at least four hours now and my feet were starting to feel it. It's not the best feeling and unfortunately the wet conditions were just beginning. Yep, waterlogged. Yeah, it's not bad. I've had the Mountain House lasagna before, I'd say it's comparable. The noodles are, the Mountain House ones, I would say, are one up on this. These noodles are exactly the same noodles that I had in their uh, beef stroganoff. They're good, but, you know, come up with a different noodle. Different meal, different noodle. But, yeah, anyway, it'll hit the spot. So it's uh, no idea I tore it off, but I'm guessing it's probably close to a thousand calories. So it'll do. Got a protein bar for dessert. So finish eating. Then uh, I better get the hammock set up. Looks like it'll be raining all night. No point putting it off and uh, it's getting darker and darker. So. I think it's going to be an early night. 